Hello all person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a new discovery coming from our own galaxy, the Milky Way, with the scientists finding an unusual empty cavity in space that seems to stretch across several hundred light years. A cavity that they refer to as the Perseus Taurus Supershell, the simulation of which you see right here. And although its formation and its creation is actually not anything mysterious and has a pretty reasonable explanation, what's really exciting about the study is, well, first of all, how it was presented, and second of all, the tools the scientists use to help us visualize all of this using our phones and using our computers. But first of all, so what exactly are we actually talking about, and what is this super shell made out of? Well, in a nutshell, we're talking about molecular clouds, the objects that are sometimes known as the stellar nurseries. These are the objects that usually form some of the most beautiful creations in the universe and are also known for some of the most iconic images taken by the Hubble telescope. A typical molecular cloud is essentially where pretty much most of the stars in the universe were formed at some point in the past. And there are quite a lot of them around us. But because up to this point we mostly only studied them in two dimensions, basically because that's the image we see from planet Earth, the actual dynamics inside of them and how stars form inside of them has only been known to us based on various simulations. As a matter of fact, at least one previous video discussed this using some of the recent simulations using supercomputers. But it's more important for us to understand how the molecular clouds work in real life. And to understand this, we actually have to try to figure out how to form their three-dimensional shapes. And so just to illustrate this, so for example, the famous Orion molecular cloud, the part of the Orion nebula, kind of looks like this from planet Earth. But in reality, if you were to start rotating it and trying to discern its three-dimensional shape, you will start discovering some other features that were previously invisible. Specifically features that could maybe help us figure out how all of this evolved and how some of these stars acquired certain parameters or certain molecular compositions, including, of course, how some of them ended up producing planets and others ended up being too massive and going supernova. And so in the past few years, based on the observations from the famous Gaia telescope, it has been busy creating an extremely accurate three-dimensional map of the nearby space. The scientists from one of these studies were able to create several extremely accurate three-dimensional maps of several very well-known molecular clouds whose actual maps you can find by using the link in the description below. And so in this particular case, just by clicking on one of these links, you can see what all of this looks like in three dimensions, including all of these stars that were discovered so far. But when the scientists were studying two of these molecular clouds, the two very well-known clouds known as the Perseus molecular cloud and the Taurus molecular clouds, they've discovered something they didn't expect. They discovered an unusual empty cavity that contained nothing between them that seemed to be spherical in size. But to try to understand what all of this means, let's actually take a look at the two-dimensional map first to try to figure out where both of these clouds are located in relation to planet Earth. This map you see right here shows us where a lot of the molecular clouds are located, representing a relatively large chunk of the night skies. Now if we zoom in to the left part of the map, you'll see that both the Perseus cloud and the Taurus clouds are our neighbors, they are located very close to each other with both of the clouds being relatively well known and also being relatively well studied. So for example, the Taurus cloud right here might actually be one of the closest molecular clouds to us at a distance of just 430 light years away from us, and it contains several hundred stars that are being formed there right now. In contrast, the Perseus cloud is more or less invisible in optical light, but extremely easily visible in the infrared, and contains up to about 10,000 masses of the sun, that at some point are going to create new stars, with obviously some of the stars already being formed there as well. But after the 3D maps became available, the scientists studying these two clouds realized something unusual happening right between them. They seem to contain a kind of an empty sphere. A sphere that you can kind of see right here in this beautiful simulation created by the scientists. So essentially this right here is the Taurus cloud, whereas this is the Perseus cloud, and right between them there's basically nothing for hundreds of light years, but at the same time it seems to be somewhat spherical in shape. And this is the formation the scientists are currently referring to as the Perseus Taurus supershell. But what exactly is this and how exactly was it formed? Well, the simulation you can find in the description 
presents the potential formation of all of this. It probably involved either one extremely massive supernova or a lot of smaller supernova over a short period of time. And it probably began like this. There was a very, very large single cloud and the various supernova on the inside created a kind of a spherical cavity. Basically, the supernova spread the gas in a spherical shape, creating the two molecular clouds we observe today, which also means that both Perseus and Taurus clouds are technically a single cloud, with a kind of an empty bubble in between them. The bubble that's approximately 500 light years across. And based on the size of the cavity and things we know about supernova and molecular clouds, the estimates suggest that all of this started approximately 10 million years ago. So basically 10 million years ago, this was one large massive supercloud. But now after 10 million years, what we find instead is essentially an interesting spherical shell that contains a lot of different stars being formed right now, right on its surface, while interestingly nothing at all is being formed on the inside. Although before we go on, let's actually talk about this simulation right here. And this is sort of the second part or the second important part of this particular study. This is the new way that the scientists decided to present their discovery. Something you can learn more about by using the link in the description below. And in this case, we're talking about the augmented reality presentation. Or in other words, by using the link in the description and then by clicking play right here, or by scanning this QR code with your phone, you can then see all of this, the entire structure in three dimensions and possibly even have it formed right on your table to essentially explore it in detail and to help you visualize exactly what the scientists discovered. And though it might not sound really useful and might sound like just a gimmick, this is actually a really important step in presenting scientific discoveries. By essentially helping us to visualize what the scientists discovered here, and more importantly by helping us explore it in our own time using our own devices, this right here becomes so much more educational, so much more interactive, and actually so much more fun. The study that I'm sure most of you will probably not read at all pretty much comes to life once you scan the QR code or open one of the links in the description, which sort of connects to this other paper that's totally not related to space science, but is related to, well, to some extent, how we perceive things and how we learn things as humans. The paper known as the paper of the future. And here the scientists sort of identify various ways of presenting data and presenting information to make it a little bit more clear and to help people avoid various misconceptions. With the idea of augmented reality or even virtual reality being one of these potential presentation techniques. And in this particular case, honestly I'd have to say it worked pretty well. I mean, the discovery itself is not super groundbreaking. Yeah, it's a spherical cloud and it seems to be nothing, it's empty inside. But just being able to visualize it, to explore it, and to sort of imagine what it really looks like, somewhere, I guess, right there where the uh, Taurus and Perseus clouds are located, it really makes it a lot more, well, special. It makes it more interactive and it makes it more interesting. And so one of the main points the scientists are trying to make through these studies is basically the paper presentation and the way we describe science has to sort of change. Videos enhance visuals, but at the same time new technologies like augmented reality or virtual reality can help the scientists to explain their concepts to a much wider audience and thus avoid a lot of misconceptions and a lot of so-called fake news. And so this presentation right here is the first ever astronomical augmented reality paper, which by itself is really really cool. But I definitely hope to see more of this in a lot more studies because obviously it makes my job kind of easier, but it also makes it so much easier for people listening, for people watching, or for people who reading various articles on the web. By being able to actually do this with your phone and then explore it using your fingers, just makes it so much more engaging and so much more interesting. But I guess when it comes to the actual discovery from the paper, well, we now have an extremely accurate three-dimensional map of this particular cloud, or these two clouds, and a lot of other molecular clouds whose actual parameters have now been established with only about 1% error. And all of this will now allow the scientists to try to understand how the gas itself rearranges in order to form various stars and how various molecular clouds end up producing certain types of stars. But all of this will probably be discussed in some of the future videos because at the moment these maps are pretty much brand new. 
Anyway, on that note, well, check out all of the links and all of the simulations in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.